Hello and welcome to the inaugural segment of Your Mayor, Your County, a special Miami-Dade TV program that gives you, the residents of Miami-Dade County, a closer look at the initiatives being presented by Mayor Carlos Jimenez and his administration. As the mayor has said many times, he and all county employees serve you. This is your county. The program is also designed to provide you an opportunity to, to give us feedback as well as submit questions by contacting us through the mayor's Facebook page, facebook.com slash Mayor Jimenez. You can see that on your screen. Mr. Mayor, welcome, and welcome to um, this special program of Your Mayor, Your County. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, glad, glad to be here. Well, good, good. I mean, and I know that this has always been part of your priorities to be able to communicate with the folks in the community. And I wanted to begin with the budget proposal that you just made recently for fiscal year 2013-14. Um, I know it's been a, a long process to pre prepare for it. Can you maybe give us some of the highlights of the uh, proposal? Well, the highlights of the proposal there on the uh, operating millages, and there's four operating millages that we have in, in Miami-Dade County. It's the countywide operating millage. There is the UMSA uh, uh, operating millage. That's the unincorporated area uh, municipal uh, uh, millage. There is a library millage and then there's the fire millage. All those four operating millages will remain the same uh, as they, uh, they are in this current year for next fiscal year, um, which uh, means we'll, we'll be able to maintain uh, most of the services uh, at the same level, except for, and, uh, and it's part of the message now, is that we're gonna have to do you know, certain things with, uh, with fire and police because uh, the, um, we can't transfer money from one of the operating, you know, the countywide operating millage or um, some millages either to police or fire, I mean, to the library and, and fire, they have to, uh, they have to live within their means of that operating millage. And so uh, we're working right now uh, with both the library department and the fire department in order to minimize any of the impacts uh, of, uh, of that decision, but there will be some impacts and uh, we're going to keep that as, uh, as low as possible to the residents of Miami-Dade County. And so why, why would we do that? Well, we did that you know, if you, if you ask, well, why would you do that? Well, we did that because we have to now think about the sustainability of the budget of Miami-Dade County. We have to grow, uh, or sometimes if the economy of Miami-Dade County doesn't grow, actually goes the other way, we have to grow with the economy of Miami-Dade County. Right. And so we have to live within the, you know, our means and the means of our, of our residents. And so every once in a while, we're going to have to take, make uh, difficult decisions and uh, tweak certain things so that we provide you know, excellent levels of service, uh, but excellent levels of services that our residents can afford and that our economy, uh, the economy of Miami-Dade County can afford. Well, and you've always mentioned that it's important to listen to the residents. And I know that the initial proposal you made had a slight um, uh, millage rate increase, right. and, and you decided to move forward with a flat increase? Well, I mean, I, I did listen to the residents of Miami-Dade County, and it was clear to me that there was no, no stomach for that. And in, in reality, uh, it was a good, uh, you know, it, 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 was, it was good that we reevaluated that, because then uh, it, it leads to the conclusion which I just mentioned, which was that we have to live within our means. We have to uh, be in line with the economy of Miami-Dade County, uh, and that these exercises, the, these well, these, these issues, when you have, uh, when it's not easy, all right, actually makes you do things a little bit differently. Also um, energizes you, okay, yeah. to look at different ways of doing things, to uh, do things in a much more efficient way. And so th that's, uh, that's what we need to do now with, uh, with library and fire and actually, you know, with, with the rest of, of Miami-Dade County. And so we will continue to do this, and it's an evolving process that uh, will go you know, into, into September until we get the, the final you know, budget for, for next year and will continue to evolve as we now come to the new reality that uh, our budget is gonna be tied to the economy and, uh, and also that we have to have a sustainable budget. We, we don't wanna get into the situation that Detroit finds itself today in, okay? And so in order to do that, you know, as mayor, I have to lay the groundwork to make sure that the budgets are sustainable, you know, well into the future. 
and the commission actually supported mm -hmm. your proposal and, and they came through with a very strong support of the, of the presentation you made. Well, they did, and I think that the, the, the commission also heard uh, from their constituents that, that said that we want to maintain, uh, we don't want any, any rise in, in, the, in the rates and that we want to maintain the rates the same, the same as last year. And actually, if we can do better, we can start to lower the rates. And so the, uh, our goal, my goal, is always to try to keep the rates as low as possible to try to take that burden uh, of government off the backs of our, of our residents. There are services that we provide, that we must provide, we have to provide, and as a society we need, but we need to do that in the most efficient way possible uh, and, uh, and also deliver those, those, those uh, great services. And speaking of listening to the residents, uh, as you will see on the screen, we will have six town hall meetings over the next six weeks, and so you will be able to attend and speak directly to the mayor, which, Mr. Mayor, that's important for you, to listen directly from them when they come out to see you and talk to you. Right. You always get a lot of feedback from these town hall meetings. Yeah, I do, uh, and, but, you know, I also want to make sure that, it, that it's, you know, the, the every, you know, the folks come out and give me, give me their, their recommendations. A lot of times, though, what happens is that people that know that are going to be affected in uh, one area that have a favorite subject or two will come out to the town hall and, and, uh, and say, you know, please don't cut this, please don't cut that. And we listen. Uh, and, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when we really had some tough, tough times, uh, there were, you know, we, I heard the same message, uh, yeah. recurring themes in, in, in the different uh, town hall meetings that we had, and we did. We adjusted the budget to, to reflect that, uh, you know, what, what the people wanted. And so it's very important for the people to come out and tell me what it is that, uh, that you want. And you know, we're always listening and, and trying to make, um, and, and, try, and we'll adjust the budget uh, to the best of our ability uh, to meet the, the needs that we hear in the, in the town hall meetings. Yeah, and, and talking about really tough choices and tough decisions, um, the water and sewer uh, system of this county has been under financial pressure for many, many years, mm -hmm. and, and now your administration is pretty much saddled with having to make some corrective actions. And so, um, you know, maybe you can give us an update of where we are and what you're recommending to do. Well, uh, we, we have a consent decree from the uh, EPA, uh, federal EPA, the, basically on our wastewater and how we treat our wastewater, that's the sewer system, uh, that we've had some violations of the Clean Water Act that we've got, got to now make sure that, that our sewer system, uh, our plants and our pumps, uh, our piping meet federal standards. That's a, that's a, you know, well over a billion dollars that we're going to have to spend uh, on the EPA, on the EPA consent decree. Uh, but we also have an aging infrastructure in the entire water and sewer system that will, you know, take us probably uh, to, in order to fix it, more than $10 billion uh, over the next 15 to 20 years. And so, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the can has been kicked down the road for a number of years uh, previously uh, in the county. And, uh, and now we've got to, uh, I won't kick the can down the road. Um, I'm not going to kick the can down to my kids or to my grandchildren. Uh, we need the water system. Uh, I mean, the, one of the tenets of civilization is actually having, you know, a, a good water and sewer system for, for economic development, but for health and, and, and well-being of our citizens. We need good, clean water, and then we need to treat it once it's been used uh, in a way that, uh, that is also safe for the environment. And so those are the things that we have to do. And so we've started out first uh, with, uh, we're going to have a, uh, around a $500 million bond issue uh, sold sometime later this year to begin the process of starting to um, uh, modernize, uh, to replace the, uh, the system uh, uh, that we have and also enhance the system we have. We also have, we've got some projects in certain areas that are stalled because of the uh, of, of problems that we have with the, with the sewer system and the pumping capacity and all that. Uh, well, so we, we need to clear those up so that we can get these areas uh, redeveloped and developed, create jobs, um, and, and, um, and also make sure that we have a good, clean, safe drinking water and a good, clean way of disposing it. And as you mentioned, you won't kick the can down the road. No. There, was, there will be an initial increase to water fees of about 8%, right. which is only like $3.40 per average resident. Right, and, and if you're actually, uh, I guess if you're a lifeline 
right. which you have less than a certain amount of gallons per month, uh, you don't even see a rate increase at all. Right. So it, uh, that helps uh, to uh, incentivize people to uh, save as much water you know, as possible. Uh, and if you're the, the more you save, the, the more you save in water, the, obviously the, more, the less yeah. you're going to have to pay. Uh, and so, yeah, we're the, un unfortunately, it's unfortunate, but yes, that's what it's going to take in order to begin the process to uh, restore, maintain, um, and increase the capacity of our water sewer system. And like you said, it really is needed for economic development to move forward. And we've seen a lot of new development coming up all around town, different buildings. I know you've had a lot to do with pushing forward initiatives to, to improve the, the permitting process but also to bring investors in, right. um, all these new developments coming in, in town. Um, it looks really, really good news for, well, for the, our the, residents. Yeah, well, the good news, you know, I, I, um, I was on a trade mission to, to uh, Spain and France, and I can tell you that Miami is a very hot city. There's a lot of companies from Spain, especially Spain, really want to do business here in, in Miami. The economy over in Europe is very tough. They have uh, over 20% unemployment. And so they, they see the logic of actually, you know, establishing their base of Latin American uh, operations right here in Miami. Geographically, we're the right place. Uh, demographically, we have a, a very, um, you know, an educated workforce that speaks, you know, the language. And so uh, they're very interested in, in, in establishing. As a matter of fact, we already have over 200 Spanish companies, you know, have set up shop here in, in Miami-Dade. And we want to attract more. Um, and the same thing uh, with uh, with French companies. And so we had very good trade mission, uh, a lot of interests. Uh, we made a lot of contacts, and I, and I believe that a lot of those will will be uh, will be fulfilled uh, with actually with actually either contracts, uh, working relationships with American yeah. companies here in United, in in Miami, or the establishment of these of these uh, Latin American and American headquarters for these uh, companies that, that uh, want to come here. And so, um, you know, the, the, our economic development uh, uh, strategy is one where we want to diversify the economy. We ha always have the tenants and the, and, the, and the pillars of tourism and finance and trade, but uh, we need to diversify that, the economy more so that we don't suffer from the ups and downs of, uh, of a national economy and so, or down, downturn. And so, um, those are part of the strategies that we're, we're, we're taking now in, uh, in conjunction with, with uh, the Beacon Council and, uh, and our chambers. Uh, you know, we're working very closely you know, to get that done. And speaking of tourism, um, we've had a lot of cons complaints and issues dealing with the taxi system in Miami-Dade County. Right. I know that the airport, the seaport, the Hotel Association are working with you to improve that whole um, system that we have with taxis. What, what, what are, what can we see coming up in the future? Well, we're, we've got legislation coming uh, before the uh, the commission. Hopefully, we'll get some sponsors to that legislation that will turn it from an industry-based or industry-leaning legislation to a consumer, uh, that one, a legislation that actually favors the consumer. And unfortunately, for a long time here, the legislation has actually favored the industry and not the consumer. It's good. Uh, the the industry wants the consumer to have less choices, and this my administration wants the consumer, the customer, to have more choices, and also the condition of the taxi cabs, the uh, the make it easier for a customer when they land at the airport. If you're just getting a cab, a right now most taxi cabs won't even accept a credit card. And the world is, is either going to credit or debit cards and less and less cash in, you know, on hand. Well, the, the taxi cab industry is way behind, behind on that. A lot of the taxi cabs don't have sun passes, so they make you wait and pay a toll 10, 15 minutes waiting to pay for a toll when if you had a sun pass, you'd go right through. Well, that adds to the in inconvenience of the, of the passenger. It also adds to the time and the fare because they're waiting, uh, and that's just not, not fair. And so our... Our legislation uh, will start to shift the, the balance back to the customer, to the consumer. Uh, and it's very important not only to our residents that take taxi cabs and use the service, but also to our visitors. Uh, you know, they're the first two impressions that a visitor gets normally here in, in Miami-Dade, number one is the airport and the condition of the airport. Well, we made great strides in that. You know, we basically have a brand new airport with a north and south terminal where 90% of our passengers come in. 
But then the second place where, where, they, where they interact is usually in transportation, and it's usually through a taxi cab. Well, we are way behind the curve uh, with the rest of the world in terms of our, our taxi cabs. And there's nothing, it's nothing, you know, that we're saying, it's, it's, we're not against the industry. We just believe that uh, we are pro-customer, pro-consumer, and we need to um, bring the taxi cab industry into the new century. Well, this, this has been a, a very important priority for you, we know. And uh, I'm glad we had the opportunity to be able to share that with our residents. So, Mr. Mayor, we're, we're running out of time. Thank you so much for being with us and being part of this program. It's my pleasure. And um, thank you all for uh, being with us today and participating in this episode. And thank you for watching. We're always interested in your feedback. You can reach the mayor by directly emailing him at mayor at miamiday.gov or again, leave a comment on his Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Mayor Jimenez. I'm Fernando Figueredo. Please join us again next time on Your Mayor, Your County. Thank you. Sir.